This episode is sponsored by Capcom. Welcome back to another full build episode. This time we've teamed up with Capcom to do something that we haven't managed to do just yet and that's to bring a weapon from Resident Evil to life. And no better time to do it than right now with the release of Resident Evil Village. This game brings to you some of the most realistic gameplay in the series so far. And so are the weapons, but not only are they realistic, they're very, very elaborate in the way that they're used and in the design. Now the weapon that we're gonna bring to life today is the knife that you find in Lady Dimitrescu's castle. Lady Dimitrescu was actually quite scared of this dagger because when it was made back in the Middle Ages, it was imbued with several different kinds of poison and given the name, the Dagger of Death Flowers. Now because of this reason, she thought it might be able to kill her. So she hid it away in her castle to keep it safe. Spoiler alert, where it has it, it's hidden in a coffin. With the preform of the blade now forged, it's time to move on to start carving the handle. Normally when we create handles like this, they would be done by Ilya using Chasing the Reposit. This handle clearly looks like it's silver, much like you'd find on classical silverware, so it would be formed hollow and all the detail would be chased on. However, all of Ilya's hammer and chisel time is taken up right now with his blade show project, so I'm going to carve this entire handle out of one solid billet of aluminum. Alright, so at this point, I have most of the outline or the profiling done on our handle. Now, aluminum isn't particularly difficult to grind, however, it does gum up your sanding belts, and the real issue is that it gets really hot very fast. So I'm constantly having to take breaks, cool the billet completely down. It's a very thick piece of material so it holds that heat for quite some time, and then I continue on. Now before I go on to doing any of the shaping, while I still have nice flat sides, I'm going to start drilling a few holes. One is for the finger loop that's on the front of this handle, and the other one is to start drilling where our tang of our blade is going to fit. And once we do that, we can start putting in the shape and then moving on to the long process of carving in all the detail.
with the holes now drilled, it's time to begin decking down to our final thickness we need to begin smoothing over the handle and then carving it. To do this, I'm using a very small wheel to gouge the piece and then using a water wheel to come back and flatten it. Now successfully prepped for the carving phase, it's now time to return to the forging, where we're going to forge in the bevels that will finalize the shape of our blade. There's still a lot of grinding, shaping, and polishing left to do on this blade, but at this point, it's at the stage where we're gonna wanna go ahead and get it heat treated. The blade now successfully heat treated and tempered, it's now time to start finalizing our shape. It's now that I'll be adding in all the details such as the hook on the back of the blade. 
And since we left the blade nice and thick for heat treat, it's now time to start refining in our sharpening edge to the final thickness. To create both the form and the detail work on the handle, I'm going to be using just about every handheld tool in my arsenal. Whether it's a handheld sander, a die grinder, a Dremel tool, or even a file, I'll be using all of it. But of course the tool I'm most comfortable on is the belt sander, so I'll be trying to do as much of the work as I possibly can on there, then move back to the vise and use the hand tools. With the handle well underway, it's time to move back to the blade and get it polished up. polish work on the blade is complete, it's time to add in some etched details. To do that, I'm going to spray paint the entire blade and then scratch off the details that I want to be etched in, put it in some ferric chloride, and it will etch away the portions where I scratch the paint away, leaving a nice detail. Most of the details on our handle feature classic engraving filigree. However, if you really look closely, the back of the handle is a lion, with the lion head being the pommel.
After chunking in the majority of our shape with larger tools, the vast majority of our details is going to be done with this tiny ball shaped cutter using a handheld Dremel. As I stated before, Lady Dimitrescu was actually very scared of this dagger. She was worried that the poisons that were imbued on the blade would actually kill her. Now, she wasn't fully correct in that. When Ethan stabbed her, it didn't kill her. However, it did cause her immune system to fail, causing a really wicked mutation. This carving was an enormous challenge, but now that it's done, I'm super proud to say that we finally created a weapon from Resident Evil.
All right, this dagger turned out absolutely amazing. This is the first time I ever tried to carve in aluminum at all, let alone something this intricate. I think the design in this dagger is just absolutely flawless, and I love how it turned out. Be sure to check out Resident Evil Village. Check the link in the description. Don't miss out. Did you enjoy our very first Resident Evil build? Well, if you did, be sure to give this video a like. That's right, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to tell us in the comments below what build you'd like to see this team build next. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel. That works.